What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of Attack once again, and I am finally here to review the RX 6600 hash rates and mining performance. I'm super excited for this GPU as it is one of the most efficient GPUs available to the public right now. Also, you can purchase them right now, at least as of making this video. I just ordered five more of them because the efficiency is so good. We're going to get into the information right after a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Gamersups. Gamersups provides a healthy alternative to sugary energy drinks with delicious flavors like Misfits Melon or my favorite Blue Raz. I use the Gamersups as an alternative to support my active lifestyle outside of content creation. Caffeine free options are great for late night gaming after the kids have gone to bed. And my favorite part about Gamersups is that they accept cryptocurrency. And for a limited time, when you purchase a tub with cryptocurrency, you will receive a Bitcoin shaker. Follow the affiliate link in the description and don't forget to use code SOAT at checkout. Welcome back. So first off, we're just going to go ahead and hop into specifications. So if we take a look here, we have the specific Asus Dual Radeon RX 6600 pulled up. This is going to be a PCIe Express 4.0 GPU. Of course, that is not needed for mining, but it is supported. OpenGL 4.6 is supported. The video memory is 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, and that is the slower of the memory options currently available. AMD does not have access to GDDR6X at this time. The engine clock is overclock mode up to 2491 megahertz. This does affect some algorithms on this GPU, and we'll talk about that when we get into it. It has 1,792 stream processors. The memory speed is 14 gigabits per second, and that is across a 128-bit bus. Now, as far as the interfaces go, it does support HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4a, and HTCP support for 2.3. It has a maximum of four displays that you can use with it. It does support NVLink or Crossfire, essentially. Not Crossfire is the AMD variant of NVLink. AMD has not removed this from their lower end GPUs, unlike NVIDIA, who has. It does recommend a 500 watt power supply. It doesn't use anywhere near that. And the power is delivered through a single eight pin PCIe connector. So super awesome for building rigs as far as ease of use and getting enough power connectors in there when you only have to worry about one on a GPU. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the test bench. The test bench is back here. It's running a Ryzen 9 5950X that will be getting swapped out here shortly for a couple other Ryzen CPUs that we'll be testing for mining performance, of course. So if you're interested in those, hit the like, comment, and subscribe button so the algorithm tells you when it is available. It has 64 gigabytes of 2666 memory, so the memory is a little bit slower. It does run, though, the PCI Express 4.0 Sabrent Rocket 1 terabyte NVMe drive, and then it is all powered by two power supplies. One is going to be a 1,000 watt EVGA power supply powering the entire system. And then for video output, we are using a RTX 3060 at this time. That is because we have essentially the setup for the GPU itself on its own GPU riser. And that riser is all being powered by a separate EVGA 750 watt gold power rated supply, <laughs> power rated supply. And that is actually done so that I can monitor direct power from the wall, keeping in mind that these power numbers will be higher than what is reported in software and by most other cryptocurrency mining YouTubers uh, that are reporting through the software. So the 55 watt power consumption at you know the 27 mega hash that is being reported while that is semi-accurate it's not actually uh, 
right on from the wall. And so that's how we measure it and how we get to that number. Now, all of these numbers, if you wanted to uh, calculate for efficiency, you would basically take the power consumption and multiply it times 0.84 to get the actual number that the GPU needs to perform the algorithm. That being said, of course, you still want to account for all of the power because that is what you're going to be paying for. Once again, upgrading to platinum rated power supplies for your mining farm is paramount in reducing costs overall. All right, so that's out of the way. Let's go ahead and hop into the numbers here. So first of all, we did throw it in and just test ETH stock right out of the box, not making any changes. It is getting 26 mega hash a second and that was at like 140 watts. But tuning this in does look really good on Ethereum. Reporting in the software at 52 watts and hashing at 27 mega hash a second is fantastic. At the wall, however, we are looking at about 75 to 78 watts when recorded on the kilowatt. This also does account for overclocking the memory to 1900 megahertz. I have had no reliability issues at just maxing out that slider on this particular GPU. It seems to run perfectly happy, maxed out at 1900 megahertz on the memory. What doesn't function very well is turning on fast timing. In the rest of the 6000 series, even the 6600 XT, turning on fast timing didn't cause any defects. However, it didn't show any improvement. In this case, enabling the fast timing caused some defects and crashes on this GPU. Now that could be specifically the ASUS dual model, but I have heard reports of other models experiencing this as well. So just keep that in mind. I think Dizzy Mining also had this problem. But as you see, we did hit three watts less than what has been advertised as the watt wattage can power consumption within the software and then like i said you're looking at 78 watts at the wall with a gold rated power supply now let's go ahead and take a look at ergo now ergo is currently having some issues with payouts just depending on uh, the pool you're on it, it seems and it has to do with an update that they did earlier this week that may have been resolved by the time this video is launched but just keep that in mind that there are some payout issues and block issues going on uh, some of it appears to be orphan blocks that didn't get reported correctly to the mining pools and so mining pools in some cases like two miners had reported shutting off payouts although they were still recording the amount that you had earned based on whatever that incorrectly reported block was. I don't have the full details, that's just where we're at. So with Ergo, the Auto Lico's algorithm, we had 56 mega hash a second. This is tuned in. That tune does have the memory clocked, you know, all the way up to the 1900 megahertz. And it didn't need to increase power consumption over Ethereum. So we are at that 52 watts reported in the software, 75 to 78 watts from the wall. And the, the way we achieve this is not actually by turning the voltage percentage down. Turning the voltage percentage down on ETH and Ergo resulted in crashes. However, turning the max frequency down to negative 23% is how we achieved the low power consumption. A little bit different than previous 6000 series models. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear with everybody on how we're obtaining that. So at that, you know, we are looking at a pretty good performer on Ergo. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Firo. This will be tuned as well with the memory overclock to 1900 megahertz. In this case, we had to bump the max frequency up to 54% as opposed to the 23%. And that does result in a slightly higher power consumption. Exactly what that is, is gonna be 68 watts reported in software and 98 watts reported at the wall. This results in 14.7 mega hash a second. And those are the numbers we're gonna run with in what to mine. 
Then we did take a look at Flux. This has been a big request for the RX 6600 and it performs surprisingly well. And I am looking forward to checking out the 6800 and other GPUs. Here is what is interesting. It does directly scale with the frequency of the core on this particular algorithm and this particular GPU. So what that meant was turning the maximum frequency up to 100% resulted in the max hash rate that we can get. Now, of course, dialing this in later to see what the best hash to power consumption is going to be may change where you wanted to have your settings. The memory remained at 1,890 megahertz and while mining, the core hit 2,484 megahertz. Going to 110 to 111% on the max frequency did not net any improvement and only increased the power consumption. The power consumption on Flux reported within the software was 102 watts, while the power consumption reported by the kilowatt was 140 watts at the wall. Now, this resulted in a hash rate of 25 solutions a second, 25 to 26 solutions a second, which is actually comparable to the RTX 3060, as you can see in the screen. The other thing that is interesting here is that while they do mine almost the same, the power consumption is much higher on the 3060 at 150 watts. So while this particular algorithm does require you to turn up the power consumption on the RX 6600, it still outperforms most other GPUs in a hash rate to power, the hash rate to power comparison. So it's still good to look at the RX 6600 for flux in this case. Next, we have Ravencoin, and Ravencoin is pretty similar to Firo. So the threshold here is going to be turning up the max frequency percentage to 56%. The core clock or the memory clock, excuse me, is going to go up to that 1890 megahertz. And this is going to net you 68 watts in the software with once again around 96 to 100 watts at the wall with a gold rated power supply. This resulted in a hash rate of once again, pretty much the same as Firo at 14.7 mega hash a second. Let's go ahead and hop into the fun part, which is the profitability. So now we have what to mine pulled up and I have basically plugged everything in here. I do need to do this one as well. So as you can see, Ethereum at 56 and 75 watts. We have Autolycos at 56. Ooh, this is wrong. Let me fix this real quick so that we get the right hash rate. So on this, right, we had the 27 mega hash a second at 75 watts and 27 mega hash a second at 75 watts on ETH. The Autolycos is 56 mega hash a second at 75 watts. We have Zell hash at 35 uh, solutions a second or hash a second at 140 watts. Ravencoin at 14.7 mega hash a second at 96 watts and Firo at 14.7 mega hash a second at 98 watts. What does this result in? This does result in a winning uh, coin of Flux being first place at least in overall revenue. So what's, the, what's going to take into account? Here's that 10 cents a kilowatt hour. If you have a higher kilowatt hour, then this is going to look worse. And if you have a lower, this is going to look better. For Flux, it's actually after 10 cents a kilowatt hour, dead even with Ethereum at $1.42 a day after that power consumption is taken into account. Same with Ethereum, except Ethereum is only netting you a revenue of $1.60 a day with that $1.42 after power consumption. And that's going to depend on coming in here for your cost and calculating out that 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Ravencoin is still over a dollar a day, which is good to see with a revenue of $1.27 and then $1.04 after power consumption. Firo is over a dollar as well at $1.26 in revenue with $1.03 after power consumption. Ergo falls pretty far behind and it's going to be at a dollar in revenue with 82 cents a day in uh, after power. 
So, and that's 10 cents a kilowatt hour. You do have the rest here, Ethereum Classic, you have Quark, you have Etho. These are all ET hash coins. Take for, take it for what it is. But at the, at the current setup, you know, basically you're looking at Flux or Ethereum, depending on your power cost, right? So if we put in my power cost, then, you know, at this point, Zell hash flux is going to be seven cents a day more profitable than Ethereum. However, if we went ahead and put in something like the 18 cents a kilowatt hour that a lot of the UK sees, then we'd be looking at flux being less profitable at a dollar 15 a day after power, with Ethereum taking the lead at a dollar 27. Even so, these are the numbers and it's just important to basically take it into account when you are calculating these things out. So, all in all, the RX 6600 is one of the most efficient GPUs available to the public, at least from the gaming line. We should mention, of course, the A2000 is looking very promising. However, the price uh, in the scalper market is a little bit higher. Right now, you can still go to places like roguecast.com and pick up some 6600s for $4.99 a piece. While that price does seem high, you still have an ROI that is going to be less than one year. And so there is that. And it would be less than one year on Flux, provided Flux remained at the same price uh, through that time or went up in relation to difficulty because of course we have to talk about the merge and the possibility of that taking place in June of 2022, which would be before you paid off the GPU. So we're gonna be discussing that in more detail here shortly. So if you're interested in that, hit the sub and the notification bell so the algorithm lets you know when it is posted. Thanks everybody for watching. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.